what's happening today? I'm Christina Egan. I'm the Executive Director of the Greater Portland Council of Governments. Today, we've got the stupendous Tournament of Transit, where we have teams racing across the region using public transportation, ferries, buses, and trains, in order to win fabulous prizes and learn about our transit network. Well, we have, um, we've been telling the, our members, the city councilors and transit agency board members and people that make decisions about transportation funding, that we want to help them understand how the system works, what needs to be improved, so we can improve the transit experience for all of our riders in the region. So this morning we are at the Saco train station, and they can either take the train or they can take shuttle bus Zoom to get north. And then we're going to be ending in downtown Portland after people have gone out to the islands, have gone west, have gone north, and come back down to Portland for a celebration. I'm Greg Jordan, General Manager for the Greater Portland Transit District, and I'm here joining GP Cog's uh, stupendous Tournament of Transit. Uh, the purpose of this event is to bring uh, elected officials, uh, staff from around the region, residents, citizens, riders, to really experience the region's uh, transportation system um, and ride services they may not have ridden in the past and see how the whole system kind of works together or actually maybe doesn't work together. The point of this whole thing is to really expose how we can be organizing our system, managing it, scheduling it, integrating it better so it's more seamless for riders. And this exercise is really going to help the people who make policy on transportation understand how it can sometimes be really hard to get around in this region. Kevin Sutherland, City Administrator in Saco. I am participating in the stupendous Tournament of Transit. So unfortunately, I'm not actually starting in Saco. I have to take a taxi up to Portland to get my, my uh, route started. So. I'm heading to Westbrook. I have an appointment there. Uh, then I have to head to a whole bunch of different locations before trying to get back to Portland. So it should be interesting because I've never tried any of these particular routes. What worked awesome? Like, what was great about today? What would you say? Connections. Yes. All right. And that means that they were, describe, like. Timely. Um, Timely, you didn't have to wait that long? OK, awesome. What else? Bus drivers are great. Bus drivers are great. They are great, aren't they? And uh, Rebecca, tell me, what was particularly great about bus drivers today? Uh, they were friendly, they were helpful, and we had one that obviously stayed a Canadian. Right. Oh. A Canadian! Awesome! <laughs> I think our passengers are great. You nice! Know, um, the, the passengers and the people that are riding um, the transit every day are really willing to help. Yeah. For a lot of us, it's our first time on certain things, and we would I'd be like, where's the next? Oh, here! Here's the schedule! So it's really refreshing and nice to see yeah. the really wonderful people that are, that are taking all of our different modes of transportation. Friendly and helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Greg. So I think even though we have a lot of work to do, I think I think a lot maybe many people learn you can actually navigate this region on transit. Yes, can navigate the region. That's great. What else? As long as you have you folks to help us get that schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll come back to that. I think generally speaking, uh, for our part anyway, all of the transportation, train, buses, etc., were very clean and and in really good shape. Clean vehicles. Great. The transit app worked well. The actual transit app, right? Yeah. Transit, and I think it's just two A, two yeah. P's, right? We were For able the, to modify the actual our trips because of that. Yep. For timing. Yeah. Could so modify. So. That's See, not good. Not only does the transit app work, but people actually use it. We saw several people yep. waiting for vehicles, and we said, "What are you looking at? Oh, we're just seeing where the bus is." Yeah. Great, thank you. Did I see another hand over here? Kevin. Um, there were definitely times when there were, uh, I think people who wanted to get on the bus who were asking where does this bus go, or that actually slowed down some of the process. So we were late getting to places, in part because so many people were asking. Asking, yeah. So I, I so. think there's, yeah, there's some sort of education that can be done 
Yep. Yeah. Bus drivers or information they can hand out quickly. Yep. Uh, my name is Sarah Cushman. I'm a transportation planning consultant, and I work with GoMain, the statewide commuter assistance program. So we got to be on one of the teams today. I love riding the bus anyway, so this was extra fun to have a group and get to pop on different routes and different providers together. Um, and so we had a blast. It was great. And it was actually really much more seamless than I thought because we had to jump so many routes. We did two different providers and two different routes, or four different routes, and I just couldn't imagine them all lining up, but we got, got here early. We were, <clears throat> we were medical salespeople who needed to hit main med offices in Scarborough. We also needed to get to Westbrook. We started in Saco, so Saco, Scarborough, Westbrook, and then Falmouth. So back into Portland, back out to Falmouth, and back to Portland. Four hours. Yeah. Not four hours on the bus, but four hours total to all those spots. Oh, we had a hilarious number seven Falmouth Flyer bus driver who I said, we're, by the way, we're taking the scenic route, meaning I wanted to know if we needed to pay twice because we were going to do the whole route out and back. And he said, no, you're taking my route. I don't know anything about the scenic route. So. Anyway, um, lots of watching folks help each other out with baby strollers and just some sweet, funny conversation among the community piece, I think, the most fun. Okay. It's very helpful when they announce the upcoming stop. Yeah. Stop announcements. My comment was going to be that many of them do not announce stops, and you would have no idea where you were or what the next stop was. And so yeah. So I'm going to put this on the Delta because it's you. a little Sorry. inconsistent. No, it's like um, some. We, I think we our team was only on one bus that had yes. announcements. We rode seven anyway, buses today. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yep. That's right. Okay. What else? Good. Touching a little bit on other transits knowing each other's yes. stops. Here again, that can distract the driver a little bit, but like we were talking about if they were able to carry our schedules. So we were on one transit and they were asking about the connection to the shuttle bus. And the driver says, I don't know, that's not our bus, that's not our service. But if they would have had a schedule, yeah, and same thing, vice versa, if we had some of Metro schedules or some of the other schedules. I think communication is a key, and I know I've been preaching this for two years now, but it'd be really nice if we could get together and have a meeting with all the transits and talk about that. Yep, so I'm noting here, Perry Ann, the drivers don't know the other systems as well, but the positive is there's a lot of communication that's happening between p passengers and riders. Correct. Great. Yes? I'd like to offer that Bitterford and Freeport, because that was our experience, their people on the ground at the transportation centers, information centers, were very helpful, very friendly, and uh, and unfortunately knowledgeable because we didn't like what they said. But, <laughs> but they knew. But they knew what they were but talking they, about. But they were right. They yeah. were absolutely right. All right, Greg. Could add one thing. The um, the people I found most helpful were the people that are regular riders of the system. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Those yep. people, they know their stuff. They're like, oh, no, no, that bus does this and this, but uh, I do that one first. Yeah. It's almost like they should be rewarded in some way. Like writers of the month. Or, they're oh. helping people navigate the own system more than I think a lot That's of That's great. Like I'm going to start a third one do. here just to, so Perry Ann, you had a, uh, a couple suggestions on how to move forward. So I'm just starting a, a fresh sheet. So you're talking about writers of the month. And um, Perry Ann, you talked about um, kind of a driver's circle, like, uh, that the agency drivers would know each other? Is that what you're talking about? Well, the agencies being able to the communicate Agencies to... I know a lot. I will get phone calls from Metro, and I will even call Metro and, you know, say, hey, we have somebody that needs to get from point A to point B. Yep. Um, I, 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 get, I get people, veterans, coming down from Augusta trying to make yep. a trip down to one place. And it's nice to be able to have that information together. Okay. So that we can work. Great. My name is Sarah Zagrafis and I'm the Transportation Director for the Greater Portland Council of Governments. It was so much fun. My group, we were the day trippers and our challenge was to get from Saco to um, the Casco Bay Ferry to go to Peaks Island. It's a beautiful day for it. So we started on the train and we transferred to the Metro bus and we encountered a lot of folks. Everyone was super friendly, very helpful, 
Um, we learned about some of their own challenges using transit that we can take back to our lives and our work. And it was so fun. It was the best day. Oh. Probably my most memorable event, memorable event of the day was on the Metro bus when I was sitting next to a woman with all of her groceries. And she was telling me that today was her day to go get her groceries. And she got on the bus this morning around 9 and it was about 12 and she was coming back with her groceries and then at her bus stop she had another half mile walk with her groceries and she was just telling me though about how reliable and helpful it is to have the bus service because if not she would either have to walk the entire way or use a taxi or Uber to get her groceries. All right, what else was great? I'll add one myself which I had a very good customer service experience with South Portland bus. I called and they were terrific. Of course, I did have a little hint to call, <laughs> but it was it was good customer service. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, so that was great. Anything else? Okay. Oh, Casey. Even though I wasn't able to use cash at the Down Easter, it was a very smooth process for me to purchase with a card. Um, it took minute, like a minute for me to get my ticket and board. So, but that process was smooth. But anyone who would only have cash would have been stuck. Would have been no, stuck. You can pay. You can pay. Let's talk. About, let's go to the next because this is something that Jennifer was actually noting is that Jennifer smoothed the way for the Down Easter drivers <laughs> uh, riders today. Thank you, Jennifer. Sorry. Yep. And um, <laughs> and uh, Jennifer, do you want to share what the issue is there? Sure, I'd be happy to. So, <laughs> the, the, so on the Down Easter, you can purchase cash. It's going to cost you $5 more, but you have to have your ticket booked in advance. So it's not ideal. So we always recommend that people um, book in advance. But to your point, the kiosk is very easy. And so, you know, in retrospect a little bit, once I found out that cash was the only option for today, I did need to um, make some arrangements to make sure that our doctors on board were aware there was going to be more people that were going to be trying to pay with cash. And I know there was a mixed bag, so some folks did use the kiosk and some did use um, cash on board, but... Yeah. With it's a good thing... On board, they required uh, I have to have ID. And, and I have ID, which is... It's, some people don't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that... And to, me, and to that point, you know, it's an, it's an Amtrak national reservation service, so you need to have, you know, I always tell people they, they should have an ID on them when they're traveling, um, but I also think you need to have an ID um, and in a costume there. You know? yep. So really also, yep. you know, we reward people for booking in advance. You're going to yep. save money if you book earlier. So I apologize I had to cheat. Um, I did not. <laughs> I, I think everybody's glad you did. I <laughs> to be a part of today, and so I wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And Rob, you want to share that you were a senior today? Uh, yeah, so the nice other thing on the other side of <laughs> yeah. it is if you use the kiosk, you can save money when you have limited funds by going to the kiosk and, and being a, you're a, senior. a so student you're or a senior <laughs> or <laughs> something else for a slightly lo lesser rate. That's and great. Nobody cares, apparently. So that was good. <laughs> we do, but I make a call in advance, so they're not going to There you go. So it all worked out. That was great. So. And the Down Easter was very senior. Now let's be clear. I have oh, never seen it. Oh, scenic. <laughs> it was. So I think you owe the Down Easter a few more bucks. Uh, they, they got the money back. They can, she can take it up with these people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else What else did you see? Yes, you have a plus. The trolley that we built. Yep. And all through Candy Bank and by all the beaches. And the Mike, who was our tour guide, stopped. <laughs> tour guide slash bus driver? Yeah, he was awesome. But he explained who, how much the houses were, and um, you know, a little bit of history about how Kenny wow. Bunk became separate from Kenny Bunk Fort. And uh, it was it was fun and very pretty. It's a great ride. I would tell people go for a buck. You can ride around there. It's a good ride. For one dollar? One dollar. Wow. Wow. Well, and you can like get a bargain. You can get off if you want to and then get back on. You can shop around Kenny Bunk if you want to and then and, get back yeah. on. So it's hop on, hop on. And is, Frank, is Frank that the on. that's the York County Community yes. Action yes, Service, yes. right? Yes. Yep. Yay. Excellent. Awesome. A buck ride. If you get off and get back on, I will charge you another dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it's still worth it. It's still worth it.
All right, so let's uh, going, switch go, gears. Yeah, okay. going back to that one. Yes. Um, and I'm jumping sort of on this the is same Delta idea is here. Yeah. of the down eastern with the extra five dollars. There is a, I think, a profound lack of information, misinformation, and lack of signage across the board. Starting with no one in the world knows that you have to have an extra five dollars getting on the train or ID to her point. Yeah. But even when we got off, we, as I mentioned, we had very informative people. But if those offices were closed or anything else, you'd be yeah. lost. Yeah. Okay. So. Good. Thank you. Other things that you think we can work on to improve the system, Mike, and then Alan. Um, one point about it was kind of mentioned about other systems, but there's no regional transit guide on um, other buses right and so we ran into one person and and he was very honest with us and one of the things he said to me which will not shock everyone is that he wished everything was one system mm -hmm. so that he had one map and yeah. one guide and all the routes were in sync and things like that yeah. so that was unique that that individual told us that just when he was asking us about a regional transit guide and we fortunately had one that we gave to him to henry. help henry henry yeah henry yeah, yeah. and and yep yeah, and piggybacking on that, um, we had an experience coming off the breeze trying to connect to the metro, which we missed. So epic fail, we didn't actually make it. But, um, <laughs> but it was by like by eight minutes and it w we would have been an hour later. Um, the other side of it though is I overheard someone getting off asking about how to get to Biddeford and the, br the driver's response was, that's a different system, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, where the which drivers don't awful. really, yeah, so, yeah. right. Yeah, Alan? We got, we got the same thing, by the way, just to echo that. You got that same yeah. thing. Yeah. I, I think that we should all, as all the transit providers, look at having uniform signage. So when people are looking, the sign looks the same on any of our systems. Yeah. And it will help the tourists greatly, but at the same time, it'll help the locals that want to expand their you know, ridership further away from their home base. Amy Guerin, a program director at Portland Downtown. Well, we were the, we named ourselves the Colossal Collegiates. Our, uh, we were assigned uh, a task to complete as SMCC students. So we had uh, start. We started in Saco with everyone else at the uh, at the Amtrak station down Easter. We took the down Easter to Portland, and from the Portland Transportation Center, we took the Metro bus route number one to downtown, knowing that that's where it all starts. We figured we would end up there to begin with, and then uh, go from there to, to South Portland. So we had a really quick transfer. We were a little nervous we weren't going to make it, but we made it to the South Portland bus just in time. We stepped off our number one Metro bus and immediately got on the bus number twenty. Uh, 21 over to South Portland and uh, went all the way over to SMCC where we had a picnic lunch provided by GP Cog today and played a little volleyball and then uh, we got on another bus the 24 bus 24A going to back to the center of town in South Portland and we had intended to take another bus from there uh, our next stop was to go to the recreation uh, center the community center in South Portland uh, we were going to have to wait an hour and 45 minutes for that bus though. So we thought we would walk the mile and a half uh, by way of the Greenbelt in South Portland. So a nice multimodal transportation service over there. And so we walked over, um, stopped in, uh, stopped off at a coffee shop for some uh, refreshments and used the public, the restroom that were available there. Went to the uh, community center in South Portland where we caught a bus uh, back downtown. And then we stopped off at Portland Downtown's offices to uh, debrief about the meeting and talk about what we did and made sure we filled out our, our sheets. I hope we win a prize today because of our adventure and all that we learned and everyone we talked to. Most memorable part of the day, let's see. Uh, I would say the beautiful scenery at SMCC. Um, we got to enjoy ourselves there, play, like I said, play a little volleyball. Uh, that was enjoyable. Uh, the bus systems were all running really smoothly, all, I want to say, exactly on time. Uh, we were able to text with the Southern Maine Transit Tracker system, and we um, were happy to see that all the buses were arriving just as they anticipated, so that was good. That's great. Great. Casey? I guess it was more of a, an overall comment, but I was surprised the first um, bus that we got on, the folks were coming from California. They had been staying in Boston, and they were day tripping up to Portland, and just trying to explain to them how to use multiple systems to get from downtown out to a lighthouse and 
it was very complicated and it made it sound clunky for us to try to explain how to get around and eventually we were just like you probably just want to take an uber to the lighthouse <laughs> um and so yeah. but what i loved and appreciated was that these folks came from very far away they came up from boston and mm -hmm. were dedicated Trying to taking to. transit to see all of these things they wanted to go to a restaurant in scarborough they wanted to go to a lighthouse they wanted to see downtown and i was like wow that is a lot. It's a lot to do good on lot. public transportation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, good. And People are trying. They yeah. want to use transit. Great. Yeah, similarly, we had folks from on the down Easter from Boston and from Texas and some other places, and they were coming up, and they were all excited to be using the train. But the takeaway was the trains either didn't come up here early enough or leave late enough that they could get a fuller experience. Yeah. But the takeaway was they, you know, they would take the train more often, they would stay longer and spend more money. If there was longer if they, hours. If they could do that. Yeah, so need longer hours. Good. We what? had wet seats on our bus. <laughs> yeah, we, we did. We had three people get wet on our second bus, didn't we? So wet, wet? wet seats. Uh, yeah, and they weren't marked, so we had soggy bottoms, <laughs> as Mary would say on a British baking show. What's it? It was interesting at first. I had talked a little bit with the group about headway, and one of the fears the whole time was, oh shoot, we don't have a lot of time. If we miss that, yeah, we're That's cooked. We got to wait another 45 minutes. And, yep. But one of the saving graces was a couple of the places we were at, you could do South Portland or Metro, so you might wait only half the time to grab the South Portland bus. That's so great. So at least having that um, duplicity or that could save some of yep. that, but headways. It can, can be why tight. Continue yeah. to be a problem for yeah. people who want to use the systems. We had one big cheat on our uh, team, which was in Bitterford Saco. Our first um, bus was late, and we needed to make another Bitterford Saco connection. And I think Tony arranged the bus to wait for us. What? So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Points for that. Well, we didn't do it. He did it naturally for us because he knew it was late. But it was like, but you could take points away oh, if you want. <laughs> Yeah. If one bus is running late and needs to make the connection, especially where that particular bus was making the connection in Old Dutch, but yeah. Portland, we, I drivers do communicate very well. Yep. And that's one of the things that when I go out and I teach people about transportation, I tell them communication is the biggest key. Yep. When you get on that bus, you need yeah. to let the driver know where you're going, that you're making connections and stuff like that. So if there is a breakdown, yep. they either wait for each other, they're allowed 10 to 15 minute window to wait. Or we'll actually send out a van and help yeah, them. Yeah, it was those good flexibility. Do happen between the different uh, bus transit systems? Today? No, in general. Do that, does that happen? We do. Well, we have a, um, so GP Cog and PAX has a transit committee. And that's where most of the conversation happened. All seven transit agencies are there, plus Portland Downtown and Maine Turnpike Authority and DOT and a couple others. Maine Med. Maine Med, Maine. thank you. Um, and that's where a lot of the conversations happen. That, that, those meetings happen twice a month. Um, and we sp the day-to-day. -day, oh, the day-to-day, -day, I'm, I'm sorry. Bus. Yeah, that I'll ask the managers. Do managers talk to one another regularly? On uh, special projects, initiatives, you know, planning. Um, <laughs> I would say that the day-to-day -day needs to be improved uh, day -day, yeah. significantly. Um, and certainly, from an operational standpoint, the, the, the systems are all in different radio systems. There's no, no there's no way, there's no current way we to. Our system, our system, our system, yeah. Yeah. We can um, communicate with your county kind of community action, especially with their wave program, so that if the yep. is running a little behind schedule, we make sure we can make those connections. Or if shuttle bus is running a little behind schedule. If shuttle bus is running a little behind schedule. So it sounds that like never some, happens. Come yeah. on. So it sounds like there's some radio connections between different systems, but not consistent throughout the region. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I wanted to just spend like two minutes just brainstorming real quick. What are the like most important things in your minds that we need to do to make the system more seamless, easier? Um, one of the biggest things I think is trip planning. Yeah. Being able to know how to get from point A to point B whether it's taking Metro or whether it's your county community action or any of the other ones. It's just being able, and that's why I said, if we had those meetings where we could get a representative from each group together and talk on a regular basis, we would have updated information. Thank you, Perry Ann. Kevin. Frequency of trips in order to, if you do, if there is a late bus or there is there's a late transit, you can catch the next one. 
Yeah. Great. It isn't an hour or two hours later. Right? Yep. So more buses running more per hour. Great. Or, 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 or I would add better communication between the systems. Better communication between the systems. Great. Two minutes is not enough time for us. Yep. They're not communicating to say, just can you hold on? Can you hold the bus for a moment? Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Yes. Earlier and later buses. Early, longer, longer hours. Yeah. Longer service hours. Yeah. All right. Any others? The other, to add to that one as well, is longer office hours. Um, I know we have the availability of 9 to 5, 4.30, and yeah. I don't know what Metro is. We talked with the gal at the Metro station, and, great. you know, so more communication for the riders to call after hours. It's great. Well, it was phenomenal. So we started in Portland, and we had to get to Westbrook, and unfortunately, we missed our first bus. I had no idea. So where the pulse is and where we actually get on the bus are, like, down a block. So when we realized, like, we need to go to the end of the block, I was running, I was sprinting down the street with the wig on, running just straight down. I crossed an intersection with the light changing. It was, I wish we had videotaped that. So I missed the, tr I missed the bus. So we waited for another bus and we actually met some incredible characters. Of course, wearing this attracts some interesting characters. And uh, we got on the two. We took a ride up to Westbrook. We took a ride back to Portland. We went to uh, South Portland to stop at City Hall. And then we took a ride out to the main mall. Um, we went to the arcade and played some games. We got some coffee, and then we got on another bus to get here. So I've had a lot of caffeine and uh, a lot of fun. Um, I learned that it can be very, it can be very difficult if a bus is running late to cut, make a connection. And there are options. They're not ideal, but there are options to be able to transfer to another route or another service to get to where you need to go. I think it's, uh, we're, we're finally to a point where we really need to have a conversation about a unified system, one that's easy to transition to from one system to the next, or actually one system that you can get from one point to another with uh, fluid and easy transitions. The most memorable part was uh, Steve on the Route 2 said to me, uh, are you running for office wearing that wig? With that, no, are you running for office with that do? And I said, no. He says, well, if you were, I'd vote for you. We're going to announce the top three teams. The team in third place. We wish you all could win. We wish, well, you already you are, are winners, winners already. Yeah. Um, so the third place team, who I'm sorry does not get any additional prizes, simply recognition, is the Day Trippers. It was it was close. I just want to say it was close. Mm. <laughs> okay, and then this is the second. Place. All right. And there's stuff inside there. Be careful. Okay. <laughs> the team in second place who does receive additional prizes, the stupendous travelers. <laughs> Okay. So every prize is a little different, so you what can. Do you have okay. Four of you? There are yeah, four. four yeah. Oh, okay. Here for right. yeah. okay. okay. You can okay. trade once you open and. Sure, sure. Okay. We'll go over okay. here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. want to give away his self <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. And then the final. I know. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And in first place. With an impressive win with only two people on their team. Oh. The Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> See, I have the gift of gab. <laughs> This proves, because we missed our connection and never actually accomplished it, that mediocrity has its place. <laughs> Thank you.